uh, uh, walk through it. Yeah, when you want. And uh, yeah, let's start. So I'll share my screen. Uh, also, yeah, feel free to add your comments and ask any questions if you have one during the session. Okay. Awesome. Uh, okay, yeah. First and foremost, let's talk about the key concepts like databases, data warehouses, and data lakes. I think Dmitry, Dmitry like, already briefly described it in our last session about uh, DuckDB, but let's just recap it. So these are the main, um, let's say, concepts uh, that we have in our like data world. So, uh, and um, let's just uh, briefly go mm -hmm. through it and understand what's the difference between these concepts. So the database actually is, um, uh, yeah, it's a storage mm -hmm. designed to uh, store the data, mostly transactional data, because it's based on uh, like rows, uh, like row-based. So the data is written in rows. So it's actually really good for mm -hmm. uh, like writing transactions um, from different sources. Um, and there are some, yeah, popular solutions. Yeah, they can, can be like based on MySQL, Postgres, and MongoDB that we already just covered several webinars ago. Um, yeah, it's uh, really good for like fast transactions. Yeah, but it's not so good for analytics. And uh, if we need just to analyze data, mm -hmm. we should use uh, the data warehouses for this purpose, like uh, Google BigQuery. Yeah, Amazon Redshift or Snowflake. So today we will focus on Google BigQuery, and um, the data is stored in uh, uh, columns, so in columnar format, and uh, it's really good for uh, uh, OLAP, yeah, for analytical processing. Uh, the, the difference between OLTP and OLAP for transactions, the data is mostly normalized. Yeah, so we don't want to have a lot of uh, duplicates for this data. So it's really easy to, to write this uh, transaction there. And for analytical purposes, we just want to be able to use it in our BI tools, yeah, or just to analyze. So it's much easier to uh, have denormalized. So a lot of like um, measures, dimensions, yeah, and uh, it's okay if some of the data is uh, duplicated in different places. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the last concept is data lake. So actually, like a data lake, it's a, a big scalable uh, sto storage for both like structured and unstructured data. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's good for like storing a lot of data. It's really good for like it's a scalable solution. Yeah, and in every popular cloud provider, uh, we have different, yeah. Services for data lake like cloud storage, S3 or yeah Azure Data Lake. Yeah, so just once again a brief summary: database we use for transactions mostly, data warehouse for analytics, yeah for analytical purposes, and data lakes just for uh, for storage. Okay, yeah, so uh, let's talk about BigQuery. So, what is the BigQuery and why we are talking about it? Actually, BigQuery is a data warehouse that is developed by Google and released in uh, 2011. Yeah, uh, it's very popular right now. Maybe one of the most popular data warehouses on the market. Uh, later on this webinar, we will compare it with another popular solution, Snowflake. Uh, yeah, but uh, for now, it's quite popular. Uh, even yeah, without other uh, yeah Google services, some companies just use it as a uh, the only Google service as a data warehouse. Yeah, so what are the key maybe features or pros of uh, Google BigQuery? So yeah, first of all, it's a yeah, big enterprise data warehouse. Uh, it's good for large scale enterprises and for analytical needs. Uh, the second point is it's like serverless. So the server is fully managed by Google. So you don't need uh, to manage a server 
And it means that BigQuery is, uh, is like a platform as a service. So you don't need to uh, spend time on managing infrastructure. Yeah, and uh, another feature is the feature of, I think, like of a data warehouses in general, or like most data warehouses, is a separate uh, storage and compute. So uh, in BigQuery architecture, storage is separated from compute. And of course, they have like a network that helps to communicate with each other. But in general, uh, storage and compute are separated, and you can uh, scale and uh, use it like uh, in, in a separate way. Yeah, and I just talked about yeah scalability and also cost efficiency and, and it's uh, uh, yeah we uh, the BigQuery charges you and you pay only for what uh, you use so uh, you pay separately for storage only for the amount of data you store there and uh, yeah you just uh, the second uh, part of your Cost will be uh, based on the compute resources that you use. So if you query data a lot, or just query the data in general, you will pay for for this. Yeah. Okay. Any questions so far, guys? How are you feeling? Uh, are you here with me, or are you just sleeping? No questions. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, so now let's talk about yeah. Uh, now let's talk about uh, Google, uh, BigQuery architecture. Uh, so yes, yeah, as I just said, it's uh, uh, it has like decoupled architecture. It means the storage is separated from the compute, uh, and between uh, them we have uh, I would say shuffle tier, as it's called with the uh, network. Um, so, and this is how actual architecture looks like. So it consists of several low level uh, Google services. Um, yeah, the first service called Dremel. Dremel is um, compute in, uh, in BigQuery. Yeah, and it consists of several things. Um, so when we write, when we write and we want to execute a SQL query, uh, it goes through this uh, execution tree. So we have um, this leaf nodes. Leaf nodes, they are also called slots, and they read, just read the data from the storage. Uh, so uh, they are just uh, connected via this network to the storage, and they are just reading the data. And on the next level, we have mixers. They uh, they do mostly aggregations. Um, yeah, and then we just get the results. So each uh, layer responsible for separate like operations. Um, the next thing is uh, storage. Uh, a storage service is called Colossus. So it stores data is in in columnar format. So in columns, as we um, yeah, talked about, and uh, yeah, it 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 actually stores in uh, Google own uh, uh, storage format, and yeah, it's really flexible and uh, scalable. Uh, another thing is uh, Jupyter is a network uh, that connects uh, Dremel with Colossus and uh, allow them to communicate with each other and to read data. Yeah. Also, the last service that we have here is called Borg. Borg is the uh, predecessor of Kubernetes. It's an orchestration tool that helps to orchestrate uh, its leaf nodes and mixers. Yeah, so this is a really brief uh, uh, explanation about the architecture. If you want to uh, to dig uh, to deep dive into the uh, architecture and uh, other stuff you can like first of all you can read a lot of good articles from google but it's also really interesting to check uh, the white paper so the research documentation of uh, for example of dremel and i just show you how to find it so you, uh, i think you don't see it 
Ah, yeah, you see, you see the Google, okay. White pay, paper, Dremel. Yeah, and this is how it look like. There are some guys who, uh, yeah, who developed it. And uh, there are some explanations how it really works and what like things are under the hood of this Dremel, Dremel service. And so it's, yeah, really cool to check and uh, to see how it really like works. Um, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, we briefly yeah, went through the architecture. So now let's talk about uh, the comparison with another popular tool, uh, in, uh, Snowflake. So TLDR, uh, these are both like really popular and really good tools. And so it's not possible to say which one is better or worse than. So it's um, uh, the choice uh, if you want to choose what what tool to use uh, at your work or just to, to study based on your requirements and like your expectations. Um, yeah, so let's talk just briefly about the differences. Yeah, so the first difference is that uh, they, they are, uh, the Google BigQuery is a platform as a service and Snowflake is a, like software as a service. Yeah, it means that Google allows you, uh, uh, like not, not maybe allows you, but have some things to uh, manage. Yeah, and BigQuery is just uh, one service out of a lot of other services in Google Cloud Platform. So you, you use you can use like a combination of different uh, Google services with BigQuery, and you can manage a lot of things. Um, but for Snowflake, uh, there are a lot of things that are managed by Snowflake itself, and you don't need to spend time on it. In terms of architecture, we already talked about the BigQuery architecture, and for Snowflake, we also have um, the couple storage and compute. But in general, uh, yeah, the architecture is a little bit different. So we have uh, three layers. We have a uh, yeah, storage layer, uh, and uh, storage is based on yeah, different platforms, such AWS, Microsoft Azure, or GCP, whichever you will, uh, you want to select. With Google, you just you just use GCP, I believe, and that's it. Uh, for uh, for the next layer, uh, there are like uh, compute layer, uh, and it contains just different, yeah, virtual warehouses that are like computer clusters that just executes your query. And the third layer is a uh, service layer, uh, which contains uh, like a collection of different services, like mm, yeah, control, yeah, control services, security, and other built-in services. Uh, yeah, so this is the, the comparison of the yeah, table. So it's separation of storage and compute. They have both it. For cloud infrastructure, yeah, it's not like you have some flexibility for Google. It's bigger, bigger is just Google only, yeah. For other things is what's the difference. Uh, yeah, so uh, one of the differences is that then in Snowflake, you can uh, uh, configure the size of your cluster, of your compute things. So you can uh, select a range of clusters depending on your needs. In Google, uh, you don't have control over compute. Uh, BigQuery automatically like determines how many like slots your yeah, computes uh, do you need. Uh, your query needs, uh, and this is so you just can't like uh, configure it. Yeah, in terms of scalability, yeah, you can also uh, select not not only the number of clusters but also their sizes. Um, so the size of your compute power, and in BigQuery, yeah, er everything is decided by uh, automatically by BigQuery. Yeah, also there is like a difference in number of concurrent queries, but it just, I think it's just really close numbers. So in terms of performance, uh, yeah, here's like, like some differences. 
So Snowflake in general uh, uses a lot of like use a lot of like pod, stuff like does a lot of work for you. So uh, a lot of optimization for you. Mm, uh, yeah. So it's like some like I don't know I- indexes or yeah in storage formats stored in columnar format. They are both and yeah they are micro partitioned already in Snowflake. So maybe it's like I don't know, more efficient. Uh, or something. So it's yeah I think a computer chosen. So I think uh, yeah in terms of familiarization maybe Snowflake does a lot of things for you while in BigQuery you can do optimization like by yourself. Yeah, in terms of uh, pricing, you have uh, two uh, factors for pricing. The one factor is storage and another one is the compute. So you pay separately yeah, for, for the data that you store in BigQuery and in, uh, uh, in Snowflake. I think they just quite similar things, but for compute, the difference is um, is the following. Yeah, so for Snowflake, you pay just for uh, compute time yeah, and performance level. Uh, so how long was your query executing and what was like your performance level depending on the virtual warehouse size. But in BigQuery, you are charged for the amount of data processed. Yeah, so if you uh, process a lot, like big amount of data, you pay based on this amount of data. Okay, yeah. And the next part will be about how to get started with BigQuery, what are the options to, uh, to use it. Uh, do you have any questions so far, or maybe any comments? Yeah, one quick question. Can you provide an example of non-structured data you worked with? Uh, no structure? Non, yes. I never yes. worked with non-structured. I think non-structured, you can... Uh, uh, that you can store is, uh, I think there are structured, semi-structured and non-structured data. So I think in terms of like semi-structured is this uh, maybe in, uh, JSON files. Mm-hmm. In, yeah, in non-structured, I think not non-structured is just some images or media files. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's start. How to get started? Yeah, how to get started with BigQuery? How you can use it for your own projects, or you want to just explore the interface and just try to load data and query it? So there are several options. The first option that we will use at our today session is the sandbox. So it allows you just to access BigQuery and use it just to load data, query it, and use uh, BigQuery functions. But there are some limitations in terms of, like I think, other services. So if you want to to use BigQuery and other services on GCP, uh, I don't know, like um, Dataproc, uh, Dataflow, or some other databases, you can uh, register and uh, you can have a free trial that includes $300 free credit. Yeah, like applicable across all GCP products. But what is the difference in sandbox and free trial? In fa- when you register in sandbox, you don't need to, uh, to specify your credit card uh, information. You don't need to specify your credit card information. Well, here you need uh, to, yeah, to type um, your credit card, credit card information. It doesn't mean that the Google will charge you, but because you have like this three hundred dollars, but you just should be careful and to uh, delete all the Google services that you use after after you use it. Yeah, not to be additionally charged by it. Uh, by default, Google gives you ten gigabytes storage for free per month and one terabyte of query uh, compute. Or like one terabyte of data that can be processed and compute per month, yeah, which is yeah really good. And uh, the last option, our option, 
you can try using BigQuery using uh, or like when you will go through different uh, Google courses. So there are a lot of uh, Google courses and I mm, went through a couple of these. They, uh, I would say they are okay. So they are good just to understand uh, uh, some features and capabilities of BigQuery. So if you just don't know where to start, you can uh, yeah, just go to Google Learning and uh, try to uh, learn from it. I think it's not maybe the best in terms of explanation. So if you find any useful uh, Google uh, Cloud courses, uh, please try in our channels. Yeah, this is one of the labs. So yeah, Google has this Google Cloud Skill Boost and you can find uh, a lot of courses, for example, about BigQuery, I think uh, Show me. some of them. Yeah, a lot of a lot of official courses. Yeah, BigQuery for data warehousing, and you can even just get a skill page. And the cool thing that there are also some labs, and you just can go through this lab and try to repeat what they're asking for, and yeah, practice your skills. So it's not only theory, but also practice. Yeah, so let's start with, uh, with the sandbox. So you just need a Google account. If you don't have one, you should register. Hello. And then you just uh, can go through the, uh, use this link. It's also in a GitHub, uh, or I can share in our chat. Yeah. yeah, and this is how it looks like. So Google Cloud, and we have our uh, BigQuery Studio and BigQuery. Uh, yeah, and we can try even to execute uh, the following query, just to check if we if we have access and everything else. So, and we, in BigQuery ha has a lot of uh, public data sets. So actually, if you just want to query and to practice your SQL, you can just practice it based on some public data sets that are in BigQuery. Okay, yeah, it worked, it's working. So I just, uh, yeah, use, yeah, BigQuery, SQL query uh, editor. Yeah, and executed the whole query that we have from the public data sets, and here we see the results of our query. Okay. Yeah? Uh, you said that we use data warehouses and we store inform data there uh, in column form, not row form. Is it yeah. correct? Correct, yeah. So um, it's hard to, to imagine what do you mean exactly. Um, could you please uh, explain this a little bit more in detail? What's the difference? Because we, we all probably mm -hmm. used to classical databases. Uh, OK, yeah, I'll try. So uh, as as I'm thinking about it, let's imagine, first of all, let's imagine this uh, row base, uh, uh, like a row base data, uh, like database. Uh, and uh, I think maybe, yeah, I think even I have a image for this. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so ro row base, it's, uh, uh, we have like, I don't know, we have a uh, CRM system when we, Salesforce, like a Salesforce when we store our sales. And we have, during the day, we have a lot of uh, uh, transactions, yeah? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. each, uh, each transaction is just like, in my uh, 
have is just like one record. Yep. Yeah, you have uh, like a date, you have, I don't know, a customer name, employee name, product, uh, like category of the product, amount, price. So it's yeah. one record. And uh, it's really easy because we have a lot of these records. And it's uh, these records, they are written into this uh, uh, yeah, database on top of the existing data. So uh, that's why how I see that uh, it's row based. So we just add row by row every day to this database. Yeah. Yep. And uh, the benefit of it is just easy to write. You just add it, add it, add it in the same format, the same fields to the same table. Bam, 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 and you are done. But it's. Uh, if you want to read this data, yeah, when you read this data, uh, this query, it goes through each row because it's row, row like stored in rows and it, it takes just a lot of time if you have really big amount of data and uh, it will, the, the, the query will take a lot of time. Um, but if you uh, store it in a columnar format, uh, this, uh, uh, data is stored, we, we are separating, I don't know, okay, first the first column is date, the second column is customer, and the third is just the product and then amount. And we, when we store uh, when we store this data in columns and we write a SQL query, it's just because it's in a column a format, it's easy to find for, for a query and for the compute agent, it's easier to find the, the data because it first it finds the column that we specify in query, yeah, like in this, we are specifying certain only like just three columns. So we don't need to go through all the data like in row uh, in a mm -hmm. row level database. We just okay, we can find easily these three column columns, and then we just do some aggregation. So we find some information in this column. So it's much less less data is used. Because we just need only like three columns, not all, and uh, it's easier to find, and that's why in terms of query performance, I believe it's much more efficient, and it just don't uh, take a lot of data. And as I mentioned, for example, in BigQuery, uh, we are charged for the amount of data processed. So if we will, yeah, uh, yeah if we will uh, use like row level. We will be processed for the whole amount of data because it will go through all the rows. Yeah, and in columns we will be charged only for uh, these three rows. Plus, maybe we will go not only the all the data, but just part of this columns data. Yeah, this is how I see. Maybe other guys can add something. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It makes sense. Okay, yeah, thank you for the question, really good one. Um, yeah, so we are now in BigQuery, and let's talk a little bit about uh, how the BigQuery project is uh, structured. So uh, in BigQuery, we have some high-level project. So for instance, if you want to uh, to have like, I don't know, one pet project and for example, use BigQuery with dbt and then just use some BI tool. We can create a new project and uh, we will store all the data related to this project there and so on. So it's just like a big folder where you store so all the data if you want to use uh, project. It could be also uh, like if you're working in a company, it could be like different projects or different uh, departments. And uh, you can uh, specify um, access to this project only for people from this department. So it's like high level separation. Then inside inside the project, uh, we have a uh, data sets. Uh, for instance, here I have uh, two data sets. They look like this. This is these icons. And in data sets, we just store different tables. Yeah, you see, so here we have, yeah, we don't have here in test data, we don't have any data, but, but we have data sets, or like tables here. 
Uh, so once again, we have project, we have uh, data set, uh, and we have uh, tables. Yeah, just tables is just um, easy to understand. We just have a table of something. Data set, we can separate data maybe from, um, uh, if we have different sources, we can uh, store, I don't know, Salesforce data in one, one data set, I don't know, some Google Analytics data in another data set. So just it's like a sources separation. And for projects, it's more like high level separation of maybe departments, um, just to separate on a high level. And we can uh, yeah, give accesses to different projects and as well as data sets to different users. Yeah, so how does it look like each one once again? Project, data set, tables. Um, yeah, so we just talked about different types of uh, like row level and column level data sets. So let's talk a little bit about like a storage once again. Uh, so yeah, if you want to load data to the BigQuery, it's just free. So you don't pay for batch loads. I think it may be for, for stream loads. And uh, when you store data, you pay you pay for for uh, for the stored data. If the data was just loaded recently or was modified recently in the last ninety days, it means that it's like recent data and you pay more. But it's if you just loaded the data and you don't use it for more than ninety days you start to pay less for this data. Okay, so let's uh, cover the next topic, it's partitioning and clustering. It's really common, I think, topic and common question of the dating, maybe engineering interviews. Uh, so let's uh, discuss it and let's uh, uh, try, uh, and we will try to use it, these techniques, and we will see uh, what, why they used for and what are the advantages? Yes. So first of all, it's partitioning. Uh, okay. Let's imagine that we have a table, some uh, like I don't know, a raw data table. So in this example, we have the Stack Overflow. Yeah, the website where the people ask different tech questions and they get answers. And in this table, we have just uh, uh, the date, the title, yeah, and the tag of the questions. And it's just stored in like raw data, so it's not ordered or it's not partitions at all. So there is no like optimizations techniques implemented. So it's stored as it is. Yeah, but uh, as we remember, uh, BigQuery charges us for uh, processed data. Yeah, and okay, if we want to query this table uh, and we want to calculate something and we would probably use some amount of data. And if we want to save some money, we want to organize this data in a specific way in order to query or to query uh, to the compute agent to use less data or to find the data that we need more easily based on our optimization things. Yeah, and one of the optimization thing or like technique is called partitioning. Uh, and uh, it just takes uh, yeah large table and uh, it like splits this table in uh, smaller parts yeah or partitions uh, and it's based on the it could be based on the ingestion time of your ETL tool it could be based on the timestamp or date or like some integer column in this example partitions are based on the dates yeah so we have a creation date column we have different dates here and we just uh create uh, or like uh, organize this uh, data in a certain way to have okay to have uh, all data related to one date in one part in one partition another date in another partition third third date like like with third amount of data so it's, I would say, logically organized based on the date. And this helps our compute to find more easily uh, the data that we need. And it means that we will process less amount of data. Another, another, data, another, another um, 
Yeah, so th th there are like yeah three different types or uh, partition tables. Uh, so first is just uh, based on the ingestion time. Mm, so uh, we have uh, okay when we load the data to the BigQuery. Okay, for example, we use some ETL tools, and when ETL tool uh, load the data, uh, usually we add a specific uh, field that. Uh, that that have a date when the, the data was loaded, yeah, or ingested. So the BigQuery. We keep the data and we can, can partition our table based on this ingestion data. Uh, also, when we partition this table, Google adds two columns: partition time and partition date uh, to the partition table. And yeah, we will see this uh, later in our uh, course. Yeah, the second option is based on date and, or timestamp. So it's uh, the same, uh, uh, yeah, it's the same as in our example. So we just take a field with a date and we partition our, or like group our data based on this date or timestamp. And third option is integer range, yeah, table. So integer is just a number, yeah, uh, that is stored in one field. And if we want to uh, group our data based on this uh, integer or number field, uh, we just can uh, use this field and partition the data. Now the next thing how we can, or the next technique that helps to optimize our um, data and optimize our query performance, it's called clustering. Uh, clustering is also... Uh, Hello, Nikita, can, can you hear yes, me? Yes. I, yes, I wanted yes. to highlight about this particular partition can clustering. So yeah. first of all, every cloud data warehouse has any kind of performance optimization techniques. Usually it's, it's, it could be partitions, it could be distributions because the, all the cloud data warehouse, they work in distributed manner so it means you have more than one machine like cluster of machines and mm -hmm. they together work and and process the data or write the data read the data so yeah. and, and there, there are two terms did you cover this smp and mpp the no, could, you, could you talk about it can you google just open your tab and type like smp versus mpp and we just quickly cover yeah, maybe open the picture. Uh, mm. Yeah, maybe the first one. Oh, this one. This one is fine. Yeah, so the idea that SMP, you can see, it's the single machine. So, and you can instantly think about SQL Server, Postgres, or DuckDB. So something that you install on one machine, and it means if you have tasks like read data, write data, you always will be limited to a single machine. And if you submit like 10 queries and you have five users, they will all compete for the same resource because it's basically the one one machine. But like you can think of just one, your notebook, right? And if your notebook mm -hmm. serves as a server, server for Postgres or SQL Server, it means you have limited number of cores, CPU, and they're all doing the same thing, the same with the disk. Uh, the only way to scale uh, your SMP, you can increase the size of your machine. So you can, okay, I want to double size of cores, double size of memory, on maybe bigger disk, but it's like still the single machine. And this is an SMP. Um, for example, Postgres, it's SMP, but I know there there are ways, I don't know, like sharding or something like you can, you can add multiple... Um, like servers together and usually it's in backend some optimizations not suitable for data engineering that's why for data engineering there is approach mpp and um you know 20 years ago uh like teradata oracle i think maybe teradata the first who came up with this, the idea that oh we have multiple uh, machines like here we have four nodes usually th there is one more node like master node who like take the query and distribute the query and the tasks between between machines. So the, the Spark works in the same way. 
if you have cluster. The Hadoop works in the same way, then you have cluster. So it just means you have multiple machines and multiple compute machines. So Snowflake works in the same way. The only difference with BigQuery and Snowflake from this picture that your disk is outside. So in, in the past, then we didn't have this decouple storage uh, in the cloud. You, you might have the server uh, or multiple nodes in the server and every machine has own disk. And then they together like connect, work together as one big storage. And uh, but now you have this idea of decouple storage, and you can use uh, architecture of sharing nothing. It's also two words: sharing everything, it's SMP, and sharing nothing, MPP. And this topic usually never covering on anything. They just straight to coding whatever. But yeah, now you know SMP and MPP the difference. And here, if you want to scale MPP, you can increase the size of machine or you can increase the uh, number of nodes. For example, in Spark, uh, we did recently the Spark uh, workshop. Then you go, if you go to the Databricks, for example, you can choose number of nodes and their size. And this is how you can scale up. But there is the challenge, if you have many nodes, how you can make sure that they working equally, how you can make sure that they scanning data equally. Because there is one more term that is important to know, data skew. It, it means if you have the huge fact table and billions of rows or terabytes of data, and if you save this fact table not evenly across your four nodes, for example, you will say 90% of data on the first node and the rest on three, it means risk the skew and just one node will work all the time in other nodes will barely work. That's why we we talk about data distribution and every data warehouse, even Snowflake, they have techniques how you can control this process. One benefits of Snowflake, it's like data warehouse as a service. So whenever you work with Snowflake, it's just doing something under the hood, but it's still doing the same. It's still trying to uh, split and data somewhere under hood. In Redshift, for example, you 100% responsible. How you then you create the table, you have distribution key, and you have the sort key. So the sort key in Redshift is the kind of same the partition, something that you ties to where condition. So for me, I always think about partition is something that really ties to where condition. Then we write the query, and for example, we have where condition by last two weeks. So obviously we can partition by days. And this is like one of like trade technique. You just partition by day, or maybe you want partition by hour. Maybe you want to partition by week. Depends on the query patterns. Yeah. But uh, another thing is like here in BigQuery, you mentioned risk partition, risk clustering. So yeah, that's the idea. Every cloud data warehouse has this, the same idea, but there's slightly different uh, topics. That's why uh, it's for any questions on the interview about performance, if in your resume you put Snowflake or Redshift or BigQuery, you should be ready to answer the question how you're going to optimize it in case of any, any, any issues or any problems. And usually it's, it's two, two free keywords. Like here in um, BigQuery, it's clustering and partitions. You just need to understand what is it, do tutorial. In Redshift, it's distribution key and third key. In Snowflake, it's manage the service, but you have still options do the cluster key and maybe some other options and so on. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. yeah thank you, Dmitry. I'll add this section about SMP and MPP to, to the GitHub. Yeah, thank you for the explanation. Yeah, so once again, yeah, we have partitioning and it's based on the, like in this example, on the present date. So it's really useful when you use this wire clause in a query that Dmitry mentioned, because it's easily like for, for the compute to yeah, find so this date and check, uh, yeah, check, uh, check the data. And for clustering, for, for what is this clustering? It's also the, uh, the technique that helps to organize data in a like, specific way that helps to more, that helps qu uh, query and the compute to find the, uh, to find the needed data more easily. For example, in this uh, in this example, we have our yeah 
raw data with a stack of equations. The table is already yeah, partitioned, partitioned by date, uh, by creation date. And then we clustered this, uh, uh, this data by uh, tags. So we have a tags field with different types of tags. Uh, and we just, uh, yeah, and we just, I think, order this and group uh, the data by these tags. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's much more easy when you also use this tag field in the in your query in the where clause. So you find, mm -hmm. select mm -hmm. these fields where tags. Let's uh, start by know, Android, and it's um, uh, and the compute processes less data. And you are paying less money for this. Um, yeah, so and clustering can be applied to both partition tables mm -hmm. or non partition tables. So uh, you can just, mm -hmm. if you use some filters like more frequently, you can use uh, clustering just for these fields. Yeah, and so let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's try it. So uh, there is like a special uh, lab. That uh, that we will go through, and we will see the difference between uh, executing and processing partitioned and clustering data, comparing to the just raw data, and also we will compare partitioned versus clustering table, cluster tables. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can someone mute okay. yourself? Yeah. Um, you know. Well, let's try how to do it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, okay, let's go to the BigQuery console. Yeah, console. Uh, and I think we need to create a new project. Yeah, let's create a new project. Yeah, create a new project and we can... You can repeat after me or you can go through it uh, because this lab after the webinar, yeah. So let's name our project somehow. Um, no organization and BigQuery automatically creates a, a project ID. I think it should be this project is unique across all projects in Google. Okay, create. And it takes some time to create this project. Yeah, let's wait for it. Yeah, the project is created. So we can just uh, select this project. Yeah. And we have it here. OK, next. Uh, yeah, so we need to find, we will work with this Stack Overflow data set. So, uh, we we should find this. Uh, okay, navigation panel. Okay, open it. Uh, BigQuery has a marketplace where we can find this uh, data set. So we can just in the search panel, we can just type marketplace. And in this marketplace, there are some apps and data sets. So we can just type stack overflow. Yeah, and here, here it is, yeah, stack overflow, view data set. Yeah, and we see this BigQuery public data, and we see a lot of different data sets public and free that we can use and one of these data sets is stack overflow that we will use today okay we don't need it yeah yeah and yeah we can use badges table and see the data check it okay yeah so we see this the schema of the of this table, the fields, and some of the details, the total uh, weight of this of this data. We can preview it here. Okay, it's working. 
fine. So now let's, uh, yeah, just let's query. Um, I think we can just add a new tab in our query editor and just a copy. Copy this query. Uh, and we can run it. Okay, good. Queries uh, executed and we see the results. So it's working. Nice. Creating a new table. Yeah, so um, let's create a new data sets and load data from this uh, Stack Overflow data sets uh, to our to our data set and to our project. Yeah. So on the right side, select yeah. oh, project name, create it, and create data set. So let's go to our project. And click on these three dots, create data set. Yeah, and we can name it. Or we can name it just Stack Overflow as a suggestion, so we can collect the location time, some advanced options if we want, but let's keep it as it is and just create data set. Yeah, and the data set is created in our project. Uh, then you create the, yeah. did you create the table, Jess? No, I just, no, it's, I just, a, it's, it's a, a, it's a, 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 a Data set, not a table. We will. Uh, we, it's like a. I don't know. It's for me. It's like a schema. I think, mm -hmm. and we will create a table using uh, uh, the the code. Yeah, the, code, the query, SQL query. I think. Yeah, we need just. Yeah, so it's just a data set that stores table in it, and we will uh, open maybe a new tab, and let's using SQL, let's create a table. So create table, Stack Overflow, the name of our data set and the name of the table that we want to have. Like we select this name and as, as select, we specify the fields and from BigQuery public data set, uh, Stack Overflow from from this table. So we create this table from the public data, and we want uh, data only for 2018. Yeah, and also when we when we select this query, as you see, on the right corner we see the I would say the approximate amount of data that will be processed. So the Google analyze it, and we can just understand what the amount of data will be processed. Okay, let's execute it. Okay, yeah, it will take some time. In the end, yeah, now the table is created. We can check it. We can see our uh, columns. We can see information about the table. Yeah, preview. So we have the data that we need. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Mm. I think because I I already did it previously. The query executed really like fast, so let's change it a little bit. In uh, settings, well, we are in a query editor. In settings, let's go to query settings, and let's just unmark this use cache cached results. So we 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 won't use cache for uh, for results. So we will I would say when we run a query. It's, it will be like running from scratch without using any cache. Yeah. Okay, and let's recreate this table once again. Mm. 
running it, so it's, it's created the same, okay. Mm -hmm. And now let's query, yeah, we created this query, and now just let's uh, select some data from this query. We will use this. So we, we select all fields from our table with the creation date, I don't know, for one or two months, yeah, and with tags and drawing. And we have our estimation. Okay, query is completed. Cache results and no cache results. Yeah, bytes for test two thirty six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if we look. Yeah, still we have. Yeah, now when we have cache results, the, there are no like bytes processed because the result is cached. But for our exercise, we want to compare. So we will unmark this checkbox. Just to make sure everyone was able to, like at least who is doing, uh, to create uh, their schema, schema data set, and then create the table yeah, inside. Yeah. Dima, was you able to create? Uh, <laughs> actually, no, but, <laughs> but I will. Because um, I'm trying to do this right in the um, uh, query console, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I found data set. I can query a data set now. I using like just the SQL to create uh, the schema. So I think you you might also add in your tutorial like just steps because you have the first query you create a table, uh, yes, but yes. maybe would be easier to, you know just to create the schema as a SQL and then in this schema you create mm -hmm. the, the table. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, let's go next and let's uh, yeah do some partitioning. So we already discussed how what is the idea of the partitions. Yeah, so now let's just uh, yeah transform this table with raw data to the partition table based on the dates. And let's copy the query and let's uh, check how it looks like. So we will create. You, uh, sorry, Nikita, will you yeah. run like a query plan to see? Um, will it generate the query plan? What command? Uh, you will um, query with partitions and without partitions. So, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. How, to, how to do it, do you know? Like, uh, no. Okay, you, you create the tables. And for example, you have the query like select where tax equal Android and creation date between. Mm -hmm. And if I got right, you basically will do two tables, one partition, another non-partition. Yes. So to, to see the difference here, yeah, you can notice the speed, but there is the command uh, in the BigQuery. Uh, maybe then you will copy paste your select statement. Uh, before select, you can play, put explain. So, and... Um, the thing is, there are different ways of explains. Explain is like very easy, but sometimes it, it could be more deep uh, analysis. There is explain, analyze, so explain something like additional keyword. And the query plan, it's usually hard to read. But the, the thing is, then you have the interview about like performance questions. The first, the first thing you should say that it's query plan. Like you, you take for example, if your BI report is working slow and you know it's live connection to database, you need to take the query and see the query plan. 
if your ETL pipeline is working slow for DBT, you take the DBT SQL and see the query plan. That's the query plan is a key word here that everyone. Okay, yeah, can... well, let's try it. Yeah, let's try it. So yeah, uh, but first let's create our partition table. Uh, yeah, so we create uh, this table and we just call it partitioned, just as we want to. And we partition, we add this, yeah, lowest partition by like a date. And we specify our field that we want to partition. We will partition by creation date as an, an example. Uh, as select, yes, yeah, so we select our fields uh, from uh, our public data set with the same creation date. So the only difference with the previous table that we created is that the data is partitioned by creation date. Okay, let's check it. Yeah, so we yeah, created this table. Yeah, and so let's query it. Um, so now we can query this data. Yeah, and we see that uh, when we query the, the data, let's add our one of our previous query. Hmm. Okay, now let's just do ourselves. Let's just copy and let's compare two two tables. And the amount of processing time, yeah. And then let's try to uh, use explain function to see the query plan. But first of all, let's run our query for just regular table. Uh, we are, we should enable cache information. Unmark. Okay, save. Execute. Okay, execute. Yeah, we see that uh, bytes built, so we paid for processing 236 megabytes of information for just regular table. Yeah, and when we uh, execute our partition table, okay, 21 megabytes, yeah? Like uh, 10 times less uh, <laughs> amount of data processed, okay? So, do we suggest just to add explain here? Let's try. Or we can explain it's not working. Okay. Uh, just Google, yeah. What's the query? Uh, uh, Execution details. Okay, but can I? Mm -hmm. Details will be stored here. Okay, let's start with first option. Enable the query execution plan. Yeah, we can go to the execution details. Let's just run it. Execution detail. Wait, read.
And the records read records with an execution graph. No, not much information. Compute milliseconds, milliseconds, milliseconds. Yeah. Oh yeah, compute just nice. Much less and wait time, much more. Yeah, so we can compare some details. Okay, but analyze query plan, the syncing metrics, slot time, data shuffling, where is it? Slot time, slot time here, bytes shuffled. So we can read about it. Okay, give me one second. Let's try to use explain function, yes? In BigQuery, we can use SQL to retrieve and query the information jobs. All the information is stored in this information schema. And, oh. oh, okay. Run the query with the explain statement. Yes, use explain statement. Okay. Let's try it. Yeah, this explain statement is not supported. Okay. BigQuery doesn't support explain statement. Yeah, maybe we can only look to execution details tab, then we start the query, no? Maybe it doesn't work in the traditional way. Yeah. Can you go back to BigQuery? And yeah, run, run, just run any query, yeah. And then maybe execution details, this is, um wait read compute can you click compute oh, mm. you... doesn't tell you right no yeah. i don't know maybe there is no easy <laughs> way to do this because bigquery is some kind like work as a service yeah okay we can we can skip yeah, it but yeah. any other database supports the explain plan even spark and snowflake yeah, they suggest us to check this information schema jobs by user. Mm. But okay, let's uh, let's continue as it is now. Maybe I'll check it later. Or somebody will check and share in the chat. Yeah, so we once again, we just use partition tables and we executed queries to the same fields and with the same filters, and we just processed 10 times less amount of data than not in non-partition table. Yeah, so it's just big difference. Okay, yeah, next. And uh, yeah, let's do let's do clustering. The same clustering thing. Okay. So what do we do here? We do the same. We create a replace table and we add this clustered name. We also partition by this creation date uh, as we did in the previous, but we also add uh, the clusters and we cluster by tags as in our example. Yeah, so the only difference Compared to other tables, just cluster by tags. Let's execute it. Run. Okay, it's thinking. Yeah, we have our 
cluster table. Uh, yeah, we have our cluster table. Nice. So, and now let's once again query this cluster table. And let's see the difference. And it seems like the difference is not is not so big for some reason. Yeah, we see the same 21 megabytes of processed data. Less data than partition, but I think maybe on the bigger bigger number, like on a bigger scale, we will see the difference. But at least for this one, we just processed maybe 20 megabytes and uh, uh, partition, yeah, and partition. Yeah, it was actually the same. So uh, I think we, we should try it on a, on a bigger scale and check it maybe. In front maybe, maybe we will see the difference. Okay. We processed, okay, 220 for, for partitioned and for partitioned and clustered. Yeah, so the difference is not so big, but here at least we see the difference. Yeah, so we built for 218 megabytes and this just partitions is 290 yeah two megabytes difference so as we see right now it clustering is also works but i think it works more on a large scale on a bigger data sets or in maybe a more, more complex query with more complex uh, filters that we cluster but it seems like like uh, partitioning that we made is more like efficient in terms of optimizing at least for our in our case Yeah, and then just cleaning up the project, we can clean and delete everything. Yeah, and actually th that's it for today's lab. Uh, I s I'm also going through other topics, but actually there are so many things to discuss, uh, be current, so many information, so we'll leave it for the next. So I'll prepare and uh, adjust our GitHub page. Uh, yeah, do you have any questions uh, or comments? I know that BigQuery can query. So one thing, just to summarize, how BigQuery works in terms of uh, scalability. So it means you not you not create the cluster size. You just start using BigQuery and yeah, so... can allocate resources for you. Um, but how to be like cost effective? Like if you have big data set, it just, you know, we'll start querying how this controlling. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I know that, yes, you mentioned and I uh, yeah, mentioned that uh, the BigQuery does a lot of things for you and you don't, you don't choose the size of the cluster and the number of the clusters. So it's managed by Google. Uh, and yeah, in this way you don't control it. Uh, so how how to just reduce your cost is just to optimize queries, maybe, maybe some other tools, maybe there are some other things. Yeah. And c where where can you see how much it costs for you to query the data, for example, that you use today? Uh. So, okay, there should be some billing service monitoring. Yeah, maybe you can ask the chat, but or maybe there is even like SQL query that can return these. Привет. Okay, it's a number of bytes processed. Everybody, welcome. 
Um, yeah. Oh, there is the feature query dry run. So it can help you to estimate the cost before you actually execute and read. Also, you can calculate number of bytes process by query. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for number of bytes, actually, this information here, yeah. total bytes process. Slot usage yeah, bytes process. Billing, billing, export. Do we pay by data scan? How much? Yeah, data? By, by data processed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't matter how big the BigQuery, right? The only important, like the volume yeah. that we scan. Yes. Is. Yes. This is the difference between Snowflake and BigQuery. So in Snowflake, we can, it's based on the time and uh, the cluster size, while in BigQuery, it's just like amount of data processed because. Clusters are managed by uh, BigQuery. Okay. So and what... first ten yeah. like yeah, I think ten gigabytes is free and for storage and four yeah. In our project, we have one terabyte data processed free. Yeah. Do, do you plan next step doing like DBT? No, I was thinking about uh, cover other topics. Uh, yeah, I can I can show you what are some other topics. Uh, mm, yeah, maybe how to load and ingest data. We can just load, try to load data using uh, Fel or CLI. Maybe it will be interesting. I think. Uh, also, there are different types of tables, like managed tables or external tables. We can talk about this some nested data and something like this. So about these features, we can talk. Yeah, what that's really nice for the next project. Did you also cover it, um, something outside of BigQuery, like data proc or manage our flow? Or what, what's the name of managed DBT they, they have? I forgot, data flow or? Data, like, uh, DBT, data form, I think. Yeah, did you try them as a part of like your experience? Uh, no, not yet, uh, but uh, we can cover it in our next sessions. So I can uh, schedule our next BigQuery uh, webinar next Saturday, where, where I will cover this, uh, just also mm -hmm. some uh, theory, and we will just also go through some labs, like uh, using CLI to load the data. And um, after that, on our third uh, like webinar about BigQuery, we can try to set up uh, BigQuery with DBT, and then on the fourth, the BigQuery with uh, data form, or something like this. That, that's nice. Yeah, I think okay. uh, that's over. I just thinking about. I know the Max. Max is working with analytics use case, and he mm -hmm. like for his personal project that he can try to do. BigQuery with uh, direct integrations with Google Analytics and Google AdWords. Because if you, for example, if you have oh. real account uh, analytics and AdWords, then you can just the same as you have sharing data set and you can write away query the data. In yeah, BigQuery. we can try to, when we will use uh, the BigQuery with DBT, we can try to use uh, this data, Google Analytics. Because it's quite popular case, I think, when using BigQuery with Google Analytics, and we will try to yeah make some transformations. Yeah, and as summary, the BigQuery is quite easy because it's the managed service, uh, and um, it means yesterday we check DuckDB, today we check BigQuery. You can go and update your resume just adding DuckDB and BigQuery, and you know the use cases. That that's as easy. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Nikita. Yeah. And so for next time, we definitely will use uh, Teams or Zoom, uh, like to for good mm -hmm. streaming quality. Yeah, because I I feel dizziness 
after this quality of streaming. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I'll update the GitHub. I already added, as I mentioned, uh, the, to the GitHub. I'll make some updates. And yeah, see you next Saturday. We will plan our next BigQuery session next Saturday. Yeah, yeah I also stream everything to YouTube. So there is the record mm -hmm. of everything, but in low quality. But yeah, at least we now we can streaming everything and save people who miss yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, let's try it. Thank Bye. you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.